Hi guys. Well, it is a gray gloomy day here, literally in the collapse of industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas here on this gloomy Wednesday. I think we're somewhere around March 28th, 29th, somewhere in there, uh, 2023. So I guess the entire town has no power today. Uh, I heard the lineman out working and the neighbor came out and uh, asked what's going on and his response is there are too many people, too many people moving in was his response to what is going on. So even the uh, the uh, Wichita linemen understand the problem on this planet. But speaking of the problem on this planet, guys, so uh, over here using my hotspot on my cell phone for my internet connection. Over here at medium.com, guys, I know I just did a video by this fellow. I just recently discovered the name of... Uh, Alex Haywood, uh, I think that's his name, excuse me, little dog, um, but I have to say, okay, I have been on medium.com going on six months, and this might be the single most spot-on chronicle of the collapse I have ever read on medium.com, Alex Ates, A T E S, whatever, however you pronounce that, Haywood. Uh, so, uh, it, it, anyway, even though I just did a, uh, I, I am a new fan. If you are not a fan of Alex Haywood, uh, after 20 years in finance, I realized it was all a lie. Now I'm trying to figure out what it is. Human beings, tired. he is a human being who is tired of being lied to. And three cheers for Alex Haywood and this uh, absolutely spot on chronicle of the collapse. I have a save the planet lawnmower in the way titled, The End of Cheap Money, Abundant Energy, and Human Exceptionalism, Things No Politician Is Willing to Talk About. I'm going to put the link on here. You can read this for yourself and some other stuff that Alex has put out. Um, anyway, take it away, Alex, and tell us how the world works. <clears throat> Looking at the world through the 12-inch screen of my laptop, reading reports by scientists and economists alike, I find it amazing that all projections of global warming and energy consumption run only to the year 2100. I can't help but ask myself, what happens then? It seems inconceivable that global industrial civilization will run as it has for another hundred years. It will buckle under the pressure of resource scarcity and lack of surplus energy, and tied to that, the destruction of fiat currencies worldwide, things that politicians avoid talking about lest they get blamed for the collapse we can no longer avoid. It is now clear that we are not at the precipice of an energy revolution, but rather an energy crash, that we are at the precipice of an energy crash, an economic collapse, and are edging ever closer toward a global conflict between nuclear powers. In the meantime, the press is full of stories of endless growth 
endless resource extraction, which I'm going to do in a separate rant. He has links to all sorts of other things here, too. <clears throat> in the meantime, the press is full of stories of endless growth, endless resource extraction, and how the one billion or so people in the West can bully and browbeat the remaining seven billion people on the planet with 20th century economic tools. And of course, do not forget the threat of wanton destruction. <clears throat> the lack of critical thinking and belief in pixie dust, techno magic, and hope masquerading as analysis is astounding. While the more banal and pedestrian among the journalists and bloggers simply regurgitate the media talking points amplified by Fox News and the New York Times. Thank you very much regurgitate the media talking points amplified by both Fox News and the New York Times, the more articulate among the hoparati have tunnel vision focused on the solution of their choice that if they mediated, if that if they meditated with the same intensity twice a day, Nirvana would not be far off. Homo sapiens is, is captivated by a system that continually reduces the physical world around it to its smallest elements and ignores the resulting residue in the mistaken belief that its large brain and opposable thumbs have destined it to stay on top of the food chain created just for him alone. Yes. All right, this might be my favorite sentence I've ever read in medium.com. Sum up the state of the world in one sentence, Alex Haywood. Human exceptional, exceptionalism may play well in churches, synagogues, and mosques, but in the real world, we, meaning humans, are just a bunch of insatiable apes expanding catastrophically on a speck of dust in space while setting it ablaze in our ignorance. <clears throat> Nothing and the real world happens without energy. I have one of these uh, energy trucks rolling by uh, outside as too many people moving in to Texas. <clears throat> Nothing in the real world happens without energy. It has been said that technology without energy is a rock and a human without energy is a corpse. In the real world of energy consumption, you and I and everyone you know and have ever known were born in the middle of this one-time conflagration of the planet. We have all come to consider burning ancient stored sunlight as the normal state of things, so it is very hard for us to imagine a disruption and what a world with less energy would imply. This is, I love reading this, uh, where the energy has collapsed all around me. <clears throat> Once humans discovered that hydrocarbons burn brighter than trees, the human population has ballooned to unsustainable levels by the destructive exploit exploitation of this non-renewable, finite resource long buried in the ground before we 
became sapient. Unfortunately for us sophisticated apes, the world after this brief conflagration will be unable to support 8 billion souls, let alone the projected 10 billion by the year 2100. We are at the precipice of a long decline in oil and gas extraction and are trying to survive on an imperiled planet with a slowly dying ecosystem. Well, the, this is the first word that I uh, have disagreed uh, with Alex here. There is nothing slowly uh, this is a, a rapidly, in the blink of a, an eye, global dying ecosystem. But anyway, I will give uh, Alex one word. The momentum toward a collapse of the way we have structured this system seems irreversible. The supply of alternatives to fossil fuels such as solar, wind, nuclear, and hydroelectricity will not be able to expand at rates sufficient to offset the impending decline in the production of oil, gas, and coal. The expansion of our energy consumption is greater than the speed with which we can transition away from fossil fuels. The second law of thermodynamics, as much as economists would like to ignore it, states that energy is never free. Whenever energy is accessed for our use, some of that energy is always consumed in the process of accessing and transforming it to do work. Energy is used at every stage in the creation, maintenance, operation, and replacement of the systems which supply us with energy. Prosperity, therefore, is a function of surplus energy. Most economists tend to ignore the energetic basis of our economy. <clears throat> the theories and hypotheses used by economists are so ill-suited to the task that they do not even consider the possibility that an energy descent is taking place and cannot be reversed by printing more money. In the meantime, most scientists who make energy transition scenarios tend to underestimate the reasons that make the global industrial economy so unwilling and unable to change. Money is a human construct used for the exchange of goods, materials, and machines, not for the creation of resources. Extraction of those resources is only made available by the harnessing, transforming, and funneling of energy. Available energy is always limited by the energy required to utilize it. Right now, over 80% of the world's energy is obtained by burning hydrocarbons, oil, gas and coal, manufacture of renewable energy capturing machines included. We can, uh, we can, uh, we can hope, pray, and engage in magical thinking, but it is a fact that those hydrocarbons are finite. 
the belief that the substitution of fossil energy with renewable energy will happen smoothly and without an overall reduction in per capita availability of excess energy and a corresponding decline in prosperity is just as fantastical as the belief that human beings are at the center of creation. There is no way to suddenly end or even seriously reduce fossil fuel use without an end to the lifestyles everyone has known for their entire lives. I like this fly walking over the lens of the camera. There is no way to suddenly end or even seriously reduce fossil fuel use without an end to the lifestyles everyone has known for their entire lives, no matter how much we pretend that solar panels and windmills will get ridiculously cheap in the next decade and beyond. Although we call it inflation, supply chain problems, corona panic induced housing bubble, or bank crises due to woke ideology, whatever that means, the ensuing contraction in discretionary prosperity is energy driven and is already evident all around us. Humanity can no longer afford the energy to keep most of itself alive and consuming. A long-term chronic recession is not only probable but is becoming increasingly inevitable since making these raw materials available on a huge scale will require the use of correspondingly vast amounts of energy. Energy that is becoming more and more scarce. The energy calamity that we are confronted with does not mean we run out of energy suddenly. Well, unless you live in Canyon Lake, Texas, I guess, where it ran out at 9 o'clock this morning. Rather, it will become less and less affordable for more and more people who will have to prioritize food over access to technology or discretionary consumption. That, in turn, will stifle investment in technology, which is the only thing adding to the complexity that keeps this mess going. It might end up being a blessing in disguise as far as climate change is concerned, but it will also lead to the immense suffering of tens of millions while the world slows down. The mess is about to get messier. Eventually things will get to a point where humanity can no longer afford the energy to keep most of its members alive. The decline in living standards for the billions of people in North America, Europe, Japan, and Australasia is likely to cause economic, social, and political upheaval on a scale that will overshadow anything in human history. Indeed, we are already witnessing the foreshocks of this as we enter the decade of sorrow that awaits us. The destruction of millions of souls has begun. <laughs>
Thank you, Alex, uh, for spelling that out. Uh, Alex has 194 thumbs up to his uh, spot on analysis. <coughs> what is going on with the planet? And uh, now that my hot spot has pretty much run out on my phone, uh, got to figure out what I'm going to do with myself with no energy. No electricity, no internet. Can I survive one day? They claim the uh, power will be turned back on, I guess, before dark. I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your power while it is still on, while you still can. Bye, guys.